Good day. This is Rich from Revenue Report Cards, here to review the final product that we send to our clients on a monthly and annual basis, and that enables them to assess the effectiveness of their channel utilization. Revenue Report Cards will revolutionize the way financial statements are viewed. No longer will one line gross reservations revenue, and one of the most important on the financial statement, be under-analyzed and presented without valuable insight. As we know, often the battle for profitability can be won or lost on that top line. Whether in hotels, car rentals, cruise ships, or airlines, the revenue report card shows the breakdown and mix of what we're doing and how we're optimizing. Our revenue managers and or specialized revenue programs are the maestros in this complex game of channel management and optimization and the report card can help everyone better understand profitability and the cause and actions that take place behind the scenes. We all assume that the revenue programs some of us purchase are the answer to optimization, and indeed they should be. But have they been put to the test? Are we in fact optimizing efficiently or more efficiently than our neighbors or our comp set? And are we using these programs correctly? All those are questions that can be answered through the report card. The end result is the report card shown on the screen. And you can see that we assign a number grade and a letter grade. And this, in this case, our client's hotel B. And we compare it to our competitive set. Usually the competitive set can be anywhere from three to four uh, competitors. But please remember that these grades alone on a channel by channel basis are not indicative of excellence through a, greater, uh, uh, through a letter grade of A or failure through a letter grade of F as we can see on the top line here in flash sales. On a channel by channel basis it rather measures the spread in each channel between what the consumer is willing to pay against the profitability of each of the channels. And you can see the channel profitability right here not until the final summation and grade received on the report card that this letter grade becomes an indication of excellence or substandard performance. In effect, it is the final mix that creates a full view of whether we or the software programs we purchase uh, are performing effectively, efficiently, and profitably. We all scientifically incorporate a blend of channels to enhance our revenues, and this is broken down into two categories. The first cost is between what the consumer is willing to pay and what our client actually deposits into the bank account. You can see that on the right portion of the screen, this is what the consumer is willing to pay, this is what we deposit into the bank account. The second series of costs are between what the deposit in the bank account is and what the channel profitability is after direct payroll, benefits, search engine optimization costs, uh, website costs, travel ads uh, such as what you would purchase from Expedia, keywords that you might purchase from uh, Google, print ads perhaps from AAA, global distribution system placement, and travel agent costs. And once applied to each channel, we can see that profitability. Please remember every client invests differently and in different amounts in each channel. They have negotiated different rates with each vendor and choose to devote different amounts of time in pushing business through those channels. So no two client scores are the same grade in any given channel analysis. What we suggest is that we go back a year, perhaps two, to benchmark your monthly revenue mix so that we can see whether you have progressed or regressed during this period. It also provides a quick and important monthly and annual benchmark that we can refer back to as our mix and revenues improve. So let's first look at the components and the report part. This is a side-by-side -side mix comparison of Hotels A, Hotel B, and Hotel C. The second column in each, as I'm pointing to, is a mix of the segments from which our reservations were booked. And each hotel in this example has $10 million of gross reservation revenue. 
In prior screencasts, we've indicated that the best run or most optimally run uh, hotel in this example is Hotel B. So keep that in the back of your mind. We can see that Hotel A brought in 16% through the OTA channel and 20% through their wholesaler receptive operator channel for a total of 36% from two of our higher cost channels. On a, hot, on a positive note, uh, they also brought 17% of their business through their hotel website, which is a low-cost channel. Hotel B, it, it, on the other hand, brings in 30%, 5%, and 15%, or a total of 51% of their business, through a combination of low-cost channels, including their website, PBX and operators and reservationists, and repeat guests. And in this case, the higher cost OTA channel is minimal at 15%, and that's good. Finally, Hotel C brings in 40% and 30%, or a total of 70% of all their business, through high cost channels of OTA and wholesaler receptive operators through FIT contracts. Believe it or not, this is a scenario we see more frequently than you might expect. It's the easier option for a sales department and of course brings in high occupancy, but the hotel uh, often has a problem um, in, in the bottom line and it could have devastating results in the bottom line. So in comparing our most optimally run hotel of the three, Hotel B, we see $628,000 difference compared to Hotel A in what they put in the bank. And when comparing Hotel B to C, we can see a $1,117,000 difference in what B puts in the bank compared to C. Both of these are sizable amounts of money. We then move down to our algorithm calculation where we take all hours devoted and costs incurred and plug them in to arrive at a true channel profitability. We can see additional channel cost in Hotel A of $247,000. And when comparing the same to Hotel B of $200,209, B has more optimal results of $47,000. 754. So the total spread that the consumer is willing to pay and what the channel profitability is, is 675,754. That is what our client is leaving on the table, as I call it, through their efforts and compared to their competitors' efforts. To break it down into unit by unit analysis, that variation comes to $24.68 per occupied room night, or in what our client has given up. When comparing Hotel B to Hotel C, we can see additional channel cost in Hotel C of $249,000 after running the algorithm, and when comparing the same to Hotel B's additional cost of that $200,209, we can see more optimal results between B and C of $49,000. 403. So the total spread between what the consumer was willing to pay and what the channel profitability was is $1,166,407. And it's not an insignificant amount. That is what our client is leaving on the table through their efforts compared to their competitor in Hotel B. It also comes to $39.80 per room night in what they are giving up. So in studying our revenue mix of all three hotels, we can determine how to drive more rooms through lower cost channels while reducing the higher cost reliance. And I'm going to blow the screens up a little bit here just so that you can see. Here are all the channels and we've just picked some typical channels from a hotel. There are usually quite a bit more. Okay, and the algorithm calculation is here, and so this is, as we said, Hotel A. This would be Hotel B, it would be the most optimally run 
hotel and again you can see the large percentages uh, in the hotel website PBX operator and repeat guests and in Hotel C uh, who's bringing quite a bit of business through their OTA and their wholesale receptive operator FIT contracts and again we apply that algorithm you see that 1,166,403 uh, in extra cost. In closing, running reservations through the lowest cost channels is not always the answer though. Each month has to be looked at through a different set of lenses to really understand the true overall impact of the channel mix. It's critical whenever possible to leverage base or your high cost channel business during your need periods. So, if you as our client are willing to accept 10 units each day in high season from a base vendor, we would advise you that you should try to negotiate three or four times or 30 or 40 units per day in volume during your need periods. And that's a positive effect on your rev core and your profitability. And it's a win-win situation for you and your base vendor in establishing a preferred relationship. Each month, our clients will receive a different grade and the specific components behind, behind the grade. Rest assured, we send a non-disclosure agreement out to each of our clients and under no circumstance do we share any information that's provided to us. We are independent and I think that's a very key ingredient um, in terms of providing ownership with accurate results. We ensure that your channels and the vendor groupings are correct and accurate. So, as a starting point, and what we do is twice a year, we go over your list of vendors and see where they are allotted in which channel to make sure that they are correctly allotted to the right channel. Our fee is nominal, and you'd be very pleased with our price structure, which you will, will, will see. You may cancel at any time. Our contract allows you to discontinue service with no penalty and upon immediate notice. And as far as a guarantee, the Revenue Report Card is the first program of its type and ensures our clients with methods by which to immediately increase gross reservation revenues and net profitability. Let me go back to the Annual Report Card. And you can see, in the case of Hotel B, We've made certain suggestions, and usually what we do is we apply um, exhibits um, that support these suggestions, and we suggest certain actions to take. So yeah, there's an action plan, and uh, you should also see immediately results from this. Uh, in this particular case, uh, we state, have your PMS provider set up PACE reports to monitor each reservation channel. Um, PMS companies don't typically like to do this because it's extra work, but the result is very valuable. In the case where you know you're going to sell out and there you have, you're ahead of pace in some of your low cost channels, uh, you can take advantage of that by closing your high cost channels earlier or never even opening them. Uh, we suggest that, you, that this client place stay restrictions on each sold out date in 12 months in advance and we supply a chart on the specific dates. Based on the study we do, um, we, we determine that they are filling up too far in advance of reservation dates. Time is our friend and should be used in all circumstances uh, to wait for the optimal reservation. Um, if you're two weeks out and you've sold out uh, on a date, um, shame on you. You had two additional weeks to perhaps wait for that three or four night minimum stay uh, reservation and there's no reason to ever panic about that because we are operating scientifically and we usually have great backup to suggest that we will do better in, in channels that are outpacing themselves. Certain of the channels should be closed one year in advance 
based on the results, you are not bringing in a number of repeat guests that would be common in your competitive set. Repeat guests, I, I have seen hotels that have anywhere from 30 to 35 percent repeat guests, and that, of course, is a channel that is very, very uh, low cost. Uh, the PBX uh, operators and reservationists are not tracking Turner Ray reports, and that's used not only in budgeting, but that's also used in being able to see um, what we've left on the table in terms of reservations after we've sold out, and so on and so forth. You can go through these uh, at your leisure. We'd be delighted to be of service to you and currently offer new clients uh, a benchmark building um, reports uh, at a very nominal price and we invite you to contact us. You can speak to me directly at 786-897-0652. I can answer any of your questions. Uh, our website is revenuereportcard.com and here is my email address. You can contact me uh, through there as well. Uh, it's been a great pleasure to speak uh, today on the screencast and uh, I Hope to hear from you. Thank you so much.